I really want to do a third one because I know where two's going. But you know, if you if you if you if you judge film one um, only on its own merits, it's, people are going to say don't do a, a three. But if you see film two, I think people are one a third because I know where the story's going. Yeah. And it's so much fun. The characters like this. It's a it's almost a comedy number two. Uh -huh. And this is what makes me happy because you know number one is really dark, and it's very depressing. Well, there's a there's a freedom about doing independent films where you could do what you want, just like this show. Uh, we'll we'll talk about different shows and movies, and it's you know our opinion on what we think. We're not saying you know this is like a critic, you know, saying oh this is the way it is. It's our opinion. Um, the great thing about doing independent film is just like the show is you could do what you want with it. You still have the distributors, but you have more freedom to experiment and do things you want to do with the story and things like that. And the the studios not so hard on you where you you know you, you have to do things their way you well I, you know it's, I've, I've learned a lot I've done I'm, I'm about to do my 11th film mm -hmm. uh, and I started to learn that sometimes the studio system it's not so bad and I'm, I'm you know I'm gonna go on a limb here mm -hmm. I mean I, I've got friends of mine who direct like 10 million dollar movies and they say they, mm -hmm. they envy me because I have control but you know what when you got somebody else standing over the top of you saying no that's a really bad idea you shouldn't do it uh -huh. um, it's sometimes good to have that person there you know and maybe some of my other films here and there maybe I shouldn't have done this or should have done that or should have listened to a studio executive had I had one there maybe the film would have been better so you, you, you kind of got to take your you know those people standing over you giving you advice you got to take it with a grain of salt but also listen to them and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong and you know i've got people who gave me advice on humanity's end and they were clearly wrong mm -hmm. but uh you know some some maybe sometimes that person gave me advice on something else like alien dawn and that same person yeah. was right about that movie yeah so it's you know it, it's kind of a thing and i I kind of like the studio system in a way because you have infrastructure yeah. and you, you, you know, here's the thing, I go on a, on a, on a, on a movie set uh, and I, I'll give you a real example of, of my life on Starship. I built a spaceship in a, in a warehouse. Now I was, you know, running out of money. I mean, I, I, there's a point where I had to steal food. Okay. Oh man. I mean, wow. you know, I, <laughs> I've, I've learned the tricks. <laughs> Walmart, thank you. Um, but I mean, it, it got down to that, and I moved out of my apartment. I moved into the warehouse. I was living in a warehouse without a shower, mm -hmm. and what I did, I, um, I, I, I went to a strip club. No, no, I, I, I went to a, um, I went to a, you know, a local um, gym and showered there every day. And you know, I was building the spaceship. I remember at the time I climbed up this ladder, and I, I, the ladder slipped out. And I fell flat on my back from ten feet down. There was another time the whole spaceship collapsed. Oh, I man. broke my hand. I've got a scar here from the spaceship. Where is it here? I've got one here. I've got another one. You know, I got scars all over me. So it, you know, it sounds cool and exciting and everything else. I brought a red camera. I've got a camera crane. I've got this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds really exciting and dramatic. But you know what? Um, I didn't have much of a life, you know. My girlfriend was like making fun of me on Facebook publicly and, and really badly making fun of me, you know, um, calling me Noah because I was building Noah's Ark. Um, but it, it wasn't the glamorous life, you know. I look at what Starship Rising costs, and yes, I could have maybe had a Ferrari and uh, you know a nice house, but instead I put everything I had into it, and I've I've I you know. It's, it's, it's an incredible risk. Mm. So yes, I make my living from the movies, but I mean, I've given up everything I have. Mm. And I did that for one and two. So it, it's, you've got to look at yourself. Um, what are you willing to give up? Or what, you know, what will you do to, um, to, to get your movie made? And I, I, I do everything. You know, have I been arrested for uh, shooting without a permit? Kind of. Um, have I? <laughs> do I get out of it? Yes. I have an accent, so I use, this is when I use the accent. Okay. Here's a trick. Okay. Here's a trick. If the police ever pull you over, especially uh -huh. you know, this is a thing. You maybe should get a false driver's license. Now, this happened to me in New York, and this is what happened to me in Utah. The police pulled me over for speeding. They said, um, "So you're speeding?" And I say, "G'day. How you going?" <laughs> the accent. And I brought out my Australian accent. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing. I was confused with the miles and the kilometers, and I, did, I didn't know what I was doing. And he just sat and stares upstate New York. He just said, he was so confused with my accent, and he just said, okay, you're not supposed to speed and just go on the way. <laughs> so I tried that again when, uh, when I got picked up. I for think you're busted now, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I've been picked up a few times. Uh, but, you know, I, I got picked up by, by some guy from, you know, when I didn't have a permit. Uh -huh. Same thing. 
I kind of pulled that line and it worked. So uh -oh. try this, you know, develop an accent. Say, we don't have permits in Australia. <laughs> It's true. I, okay, I, I shot. Okay, I, I, I shot a movie, Death Machine, in the UK in 2012. Uh -huh. I shot in front of Big Ben. Now you know that's a big monument. It's like shooting in front of the White House. Yeah, you need a permit there, I would think. Yeah. No, I didn't. I, <laughs> well, well, the White House, yes. <laughs> I, I got caught in that one too. But Big Ben, the okay. cops walked past me and just uh -huh. waved. We had a little 5D camera and a microphone and everything, and they didn't say a word to us. Yeah. They just don't care, you know, because we weren't doing anything bad, and, and that's how it is in foreign countries. You can get away with a lot. If I want to shoot in a castle in Germany, I go shoot in that castle. Sometimes you've got to get a permit, mm -hmm. but it's cheap, and they don't really, it's kind of a big deal. You know, we shot in a, it cost me $500 to shoot in a, a giant ruined church in 2013 for a music video. Wow. I mean, that was it, and we had the whole church to ourselves, and it was great. Um, so it's kind of more lax there, you know, it's, it's as I said, I, I, I'm here, I'm in Hollywood, I have to take the risks, and I take the risks, and I just wish I had the studio system behind me, you know. Yeah. It'd be nice for somebody to say, here's, here's your $100,000 fee for directing the film, and oh, here's the permits, and here's your producer, and here's your DP, and, and your whole crew, and it'd be, here's a chair to sit in. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> I never sit down on my set. <laughs> He's a hard-working director. Hard -working. Yeah, that's, what, that's the true director. Blood, sweat, and tears. You yeah. put into your art. You really want to do it. Not like the guy who gets hired, does a film, goes home, you watch it, you're like, that guy obviously didn't care about anything. He's a lucky boy. <laughs> I wish I was him. Yeah, but you know. Well, his dad owns a studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. God bless him. I say. All right, now I hear, I won't say who told me, but I hear you're doing a superhero type of movie. Who told you this? <laughs> well, I, I can't say. Well, you're on superhero junkies. You're on superhero junkies, and that's why you're doing it. And there will be nudity in this film, isn't that oh. true? Neil? Oh, all right. It's me. <laughs> oh. Why are you so happy? <laughs> Actually, I did appear nude on camera once. Oh, yeah, no. your film? Yeah, or? one of mine. Battle Space. The, the actor couldn't do it. Oh. It's a long story. I, I did full front nudity on camera. It got blurred out, of course, but we kind of had to have a nude body. Um, body double. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> it was kind of weird, you know. Um, but, but yeah, a superhero film. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, we're working on that. Uh, I'm actually doing another film. Descent, I'm producing another film very oh. soon called Descent to the Maelstrom, which is a big time travel movie. Oh, that sounds cool. Straight after that, that's the one I'm that's the one you probably heard about superhero, yeah. yeah it's either a superhero movie or a Boba Fett movie mm -hmm. a female Boba Fett movie Whoa. not a not a Star Wars officially Disney sanctioned type thing but something like that that's sort of in my head so I'm tossing up I, it's it's kind of I want to do something with this uh -huh. chick who has when I say powers, I don't want lightning coming from my hands, you know, I'm just tired of that. I'll like, yeah. you know, who I do the wind or whatever. Yeah, no Iron Man stuff. No, man. I, 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 want, I want to do some sort of superhero thing where it's more, I dare I say Batman-ish, but, uh -huh. but girly Batman, you know, uh -huh. where she maybe has some powers, but they're kind of subtle and they're not so flashy, but she has cool gadgets. You know? The power of seduction. Ooh. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, um, but I, my, you see, my, you can see that there's a truck outside that okay. I drove here in. That's going to be turned into this Batmobile type thing. Oh wow! And I'm going to blow it up in the end. Whoa! Oh, awesome. So yeah, this is called sacrifice. I don't have another vehicle to drive, so after that, I'm gonna have to buy a new vehicle. You know, so yeah. this is kind of this is kind of what I have that to is do. Awesome. You know, but this is what I have to do. You know, it, it's 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 what have I got left? What can I get rid of? You know, uh -huh. what can I purge in my life? No, what can I blow up? That's what you have to do to make a film. You want it the way you want it. That's it. You know, and you put everything on the line, and you got to respect that because, uh, like I said, you know, some people are just given everything. Yeah. And you know, you got to work. You know, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn, New York. Oh, I know. Mm. All right. Any yeah. Brooklyn people out there? No, you guys, you guys can't afford. You guys can't afford a computer over there. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I lived in. Kidding. I lived in New York. I know how it uh, is. Yeah. So it's a uh, rough neighborhood, yeah. you know. So I came out here. You know, you got to do what you want to do. Um, so where do you see yourself w w going in a couple of years? Do you, are you going to still stay in sci-fi? Are you going to go to other genres or just strictly sci-fi? Or what do you think? 
anything but sci-fi? No, no, are you still going to stay in New York accent? There is nothing but sci-fi. This is the problem. Just sci-fi. All right. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I would like to do... I mean, I'm, I've done a lot of comedy. Okay. So I kind of like comedy. But, you know, I did this nobility thing with... Nobility, yeah. Let's yeah. talk about nobility. Now, EJ... De La Pena. De La Pena. De La Pena. He's Mexican, by the way. You know that? Oh. He doesn't look Mexican. He doesn't, though. does he? Wow. I know. He looks Irish or something. He does. <laughs> I think he's Irish-Mexican, actually. But oh, so okay. There's a lot of Mexican in his blood. you know. He, he's but uh, he does a show, Nobility, and he's also done a bunch of films with you as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was on Starship. He flew the spaceship in Starship, and he was notorious for breaking the set. Well, him and Emmy used to get yeah. together and just break things <laughs> by accident. I mean, he broke so much stuff. You know, he'd trip on things. There's, a, there's one of the floor pieces that he just went right through. And wow. Yeah, he's a big guy. But <laughs> but but then he's really cool. He's very agile. He did a fight sequence type thing in the second film. He kind of steals the second movie, so uh -huh. you'll you'll see what he does. But yeah, we did an ability, um, and we had all the, like these actors from Star Trek, you know, uh, Chekhov. Oh, Walter Koenig. Yeah, yeah, he's so cool. Oh, that is awesome. Man, he is yeah. so funny. Yeah, he had a lot of good funny Shatner stories to tell, which makes me <laughs> rather amused. But we but love Shatner. Shatner on the show. Right, we love Shatner. But he had, you know, he had stories to tell, and, and he would just rattle off these stories. And I, I seemed to get on really well with him. You know, we came, yeah. seemed to click. Uh, we had um, Tori, Tori Higginson from Stargate, um, oh. Christopher Judge. Oh, Stargate. Yeah, yeah Teal'c, you know, he's really cool. Um, so many other great actors. Um, Chris, uh, Adrian Wilkinson, she's from Buffy and Xena. Oh, yeah. Um, just name dropping here. I just, yeah. you know, but it's basically a comedy type thing. Oh. And it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a completely different style from what I usually do as well. So. And are those li uh, episodes online now, or are they shooting them now, or what? Well, they're shot. They're in the can. I think they have got one more day of shooting to do. Okay. But it's 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 coming together, and it's you know it's a really funny show. And this is what I like. I like comedy. You know, yeah. and this is this my secret is I I. I I like comedy and they make me take it out. Comedy and sci-fi mix really well. And yeah. When I mean, you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. yeah, it's sort of that light-hearted sort of thing. I was trying to do that stuff way back in 2005, 6, 7. And I was told I was, you know, again, you people tell you, no, you can't put comedy, get the comedy out of your sci-fi. Yeah. But, you know, that's humanity's end. Yeah, even Star Trek. I mean, Star Trek Four was hugely successful and that yeah. was the funniest one. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Star Trek Five. Star Trek V was cool, too. I kind of liked it. People yeah. don't like Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Why? I mean, come on. Shatner directed it. It was funny. Come on. I mean, if you look at Star Trek V and you, you look at some movies that are out now, Star Trek V is like a 10 compared to some of the movies that are compared out. Compared to Starship, yeah. yeah. No, well, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but you must watch Starship Rising. Yeah, so please pay for it. I would really appreciate yes, that. Yes, you can download it on iTunes. You can. Um, it's also on Amazon. It's also on Video On Demand right now. Video On Demand. And it's everywhere. Uh, you okay. can buy it in blue, uh, Best Buy. No, it's hot. No, it sells out in Best Buy. You can buy it on Walmart, but best just buy, buy it online on the on the on the DVD thing. Buy two copies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Make One up for, for you're at home, and if you go somewhere, you have it in your backpack. You can bring it along. Give it as a gift to somebody you really like or yeah. hate. Um, but here's the thing. Here's what I'm really hoping for. This is just hope right now. Speculation. When Starship Two comes out, it's not on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Reason being, it's it's you know very expensive to put things out on Blu-ray to make right. a profit. Even though a lot of my movies are on Blu-ray, uh, we're going to package one and two together. Oh, that's good. And it'll be, you know, the one and two, the two movies back to back. And there'll be one big complete story. So if you don't buy it now, just wait until number two comes out and then buy the, the box set because that will be worth your while, I think. You know, it's a nice, right. nice cool. thing to own. Awesome, awesome. Now, what's the next thing you're working on? What are you preparing now? Writing a script for? Right now, uh, I'm script writing and building sets for Descent of the Maelstrom. Okay. And that's a time travel thing about this guy who's traveling through time, he's rewriting history, and uh -huh. these two chicks try and stop him. And does he look like me in the film? He does a bit. <laughs> oh, we need to talk after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's funny you should say that. I always imagine somebody uh -huh. kind of, you know, dark haired, charming. I imagine you know? the same thing. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. By the way, do you notice my sideburns? The sideburns are cool. Yeah, yeah, I just I did this as a joke. Uh -huh. It's a Star Trek thing. No, it's, it's just a Star went... Trek thing. They do the pointed sideburns. Yeah. See, we know the whole sci-fi thing with the pointed sideburns, but a lot of people don't even realize all these little details. And if you pay attention to details and you do your sideburns right, you're the man. Everyone's going to look at you and admire you. Yeah. And soon you'll be doing brute commercials. Oh. And you'll be I know brute. <laughs>
<laughs> I've got brood in my. Who knows what I'm talking about? Do you know what brood is? I've got is? it of in my. He knows what brood is. Well, my friend, my friend uh, gave me some brood recently, and I was uh -huh. like, my, well, it goes back to when I was a kid. You know, uh, that was yeah. the only thing you could splash on your body. Uh -huh. It was fantastic, For and that was brood thirty three. Brood thirty three. It's a man's I smell, you know. I think even Tom Selleck, even Tom Selleck, I think did a brood commercial at some point. Yeah, that big mustache was very fancy, wasn't it? The mustache, and then see, I brood all over his hair. See, for me, brute was the thing. Old yeah. Spice? Nah, not nah, for that me. That was like the old man cologne. It was, it wasn't it? Yeah, now yeah. they're trying to make it come back and be hip and stuff. It's not hip. Yeah. It's not hip. <laughs> Take it from people like us. Yeah. Brute 33. Brute 33. All right. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Neil. Superhero junkies. <laughs> Do the fist. Go I'm check out all of Neil's films right now. Go on his IMDb. Buy them all. I'm yeah! so excited.